Well, despite the blip in student numbers that was caused by the increase in tuition fees, um, we're still seeing in the UK that there's a massive undersupply of student accommodation in the UK. Um, and in the foreseeable future, that doesn't seem to be um, rectified. And so we're, we're seeing a, a, a couple of interesting themes at the moment. One, um, local authorities, particularly in London, are looking to try and increase um, social housing elements into um, planning permissions, which is just not um, helpful at all for student accommodation. And the second theme is very much in terms of um, new entrants into the market being able to get funding um, to develop and invest in student accommodation. Um, and we feel that um, on the horizon the changes to the REIT rules um, should enable a lot more entrants to come into the market and be able to invest in the student accommodation. We're already seeing with clients at the moment that um, we're being approached to um, create REITs um, to specifically look to in invest into student accommodation so it's, it's already flowing through and the, the corporate team in particular are well versed in REITs although many, not many REITs have been uh, created in the last few years but um, we are finding that um, the instructions are also already starting to, to filter through. The use of REITs clearly uh, demonstrates how mature um, this market has become, how sophisticated it's become, um, and its ability for a wider pool of investors to invest in student accommodation going forwards. We think that the European markets are at a slightly stage behind the UK, but what, we, what we, our own personal view is that the difficulties that's being presented to some developers in terms of development and the, the obstacles that are being put in front of them by planning, for example, and by um, and just simply getting investment means that inevitably we're going to look for different markets. Um, and we're already seeing our UK developers asking us about our Italian contacts and the Italian markets and taking these things out to our German and, and Spanish um, uh, partners. Um, and we believe that inevitably the UK operators will want to take this out to Europe simply to find new markets. One of the things we're seeing is that our UK developers are looking to overcome the obstacles of planning constraints, looking to overcome the obstacles of funding by looking simply at new markets. Um, the European markets they recognise are, are way behind the UK market, which I think presents opportunities. Um, and we are confident that these developers will want to take this product up to Europe um, and we're already engaged with our European partners in terms of looking at potential opportunities in, in markets such as Milan, um, Cologne and parts of Spain. The UK market is still good but they do face challenges in planning and funding and, and regulation and inevitably we believe our clients will want to take this product down to Europe. Well, our experience of the Italian market is there's a real blurring between student accommodation and social housing. In Italy, they need to adopt a similar situation as we have in the UK. So they build specific student accommodation designed purely for students, which will free up the space for social housing. We've already started engaging with our Italian colleagues and taken across um, UK clients because we believe that our UK clients can bring to bear their experience to create these new developments. There certainly will be cultural issues that will come to bear and that's where there's almost an education part for our UK um, developer clients. We've taken clients over to our clone office and, and hosted a round table discussion um, where we brought together um, developers, investors from the local German market. Um, and just allowed our clients to explain how it's done in the UK and perhaps pass on some of that knowledge and experience to the Europeans. It's really positive because from Cologne we moved on to um, our other European offices and we had a following when we came to Milan of, of people that have been to our German discussions um, and we picked up interest from, from the Dutch and the French. The, ultimately the big tipping point will be um, a big UK um, developer building a significant student accommodation development in mainland Europe. Um, so far we've seen one or two go out there and build something slightly smaller um, but nothing um, on the sort of size and scale that we see in the UK. The f financial institutions are incredibly interested in student accommodation purely because over the last five or six years it's been one of the best performing um, property assets and student accommodation for example has outstripped traditional office assets. I suppose one of the, the key things from a legal perspective is not just the acquisition of the building, it's all the bits that follow on from that. Um, one of the key things is the service level agreements that you may have to draft that you enter into perhaps with a nominations agreement with a university and that's effectively providing the services for the students 
in favour of the university. It's one of the advantages of having a full service law firm. So while there's property lawyers, we also have to have commercial lawyers looking at the service level agreements and the nomination agreements with the universities. It's certainly been good to have been involved with a new developing asset class from an early stage and it's encouraging to see how it's outstripping more traditional classes of property. Well, the clients range now from pure developers through to investors and, and banks securing funding over the properties, yes. Thank you.